Hi, my name is Brendan Burns. I'm a software engineer on the Google Cloud Platform, and I'm going to talk to you today about containers, container clusters, and the Kubernetes project. So you may have heard of uh, containers recently. They've been popularized by the Docker project, although they've been in existence for quite a long time, and we've been using them at Google for a while. What I really want to show you today is how containers enable you to build applications that are modular, scalable, and portable across a variety of platforms. And in particular, how container cluster managers like Kubernetes enable you to build robust applications that look and feel the same, whether they're on a public cloud, a private cloud, or even physical infrastructure. In order to show you this, I'm going to show you an application running in Kubernetes on two platforms, different public cloud provider, as well as the Google Cloud platform. So let's jump right in. Now here is my application. It's a simple three-tier application. I have a replicated set of front ends. I have a Redis uh, write storage for, for writing my data. And I have some read replicas for adding extra capability for people who are simply reading the data that I've stored inside of Redis. And take a look at what I'm actually implementing. It's a really simple guestbook here. It allows me to enter messages like, I really hope this oh, hope this demo goes well. Submit them, and they're stored into Redis. Um, and so what, I what I'm interested in showing you, though, is how this application, which is running on a different cloud provider, can look and feel exactly the same when it's running on the Google Cloud Platform, because we're using the same container cluster infrastructure on both places. So in order to do that, I'm going to go over to a different instance of Kubernetes running inside of Google Container Engine. So now I'm in my container cluster, or my container engine cluster, and I'm going to turn on my application. So I'm going to go to my command line and run a script that encapsulates a number of commands to Kubernetes. And what's important to note is that exactly the same declarative configuration information that defined my application when it was running on a different public cloud now is used to define my application running inside a container engine. I've made exactly no changes. And that's because the, the Kubernetes cluster manager is this abstraction layer that isolates me from the specifics of the virtual machines where I'm running. And I focus really on my application containers. All right, so now that the guestbook is up and running, let's go over to uh, the Visualizer. So now you see the Kubernetes user interface running on Google Container Engine. And you can see that there is really no difference between the experience on another cloud provider and on Container Engine because we're interfacing with the Kubernetes layer. In fact, the only difference that you're going to see is that the host names here are different. And that's, of course, just because we're running on a different cloud provider. I still have my three front ends. I still have my mas read master and write master, and I still have my read replicas. Now, Kubernetes doesn't just provide a uniform interface to your application. It actually provides some robust management features that make your application more reliable and easier to scale. And I want to demonstrate a few of these things for you, first by simulating a failure of your application, and then by showing you how you might scale up or scale down the number of front ends. So to simulate a failure, I'm going to go to my guestbook here, and I'm going to go hop over to my terminal and show you this is, the this is the virtual machine that's actually running that container. And what you can see, the front end container image that's running right here. It's been up for nine minutes. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kill that container to simulate a failure. I'm going to go back to my web browser. I'm going to hit reload. And of course, the web page is unavailable because I just killed it. Now hopefully you're using a load balancer. And now I hit reload, and you see that the web page immediately came back. And if we go back to the terminal and I run that ps command again, you'll now see that my front end has been up for 10 seconds. And the reason that it did that is because Kubernetes is constantly monitoring your application and ensuring that your desired state, that your application is up and running, matches the current state. And if it doesn't, for example, your application crashed, it takes actions to fix the problem. Now, another common activity that developers want to do is to scale their application. Maybe it's to scale down during the evening when there's less traffic, or maybe it's to scale up uh, in response to some sort of event. Maybe social media has caught ahead of your startup. You can go back to our user interface. You can see here we have three front ends. Well, what if we want to make that four front ends? Let's go back to the terminal and say, use our Kubernetes command line tool. We're going to resize the replication controller. That's the object that is responsible for managing these replicas, our front end controller, and we're going to set replicas to size 4. Now this is issued an API call out to the Kubernetes master, and it's creating a replica. Now we go back over to our dashboard, and we reload the dashboard. 
And you can see here now that we have four front-end replicas. Now, likewise, we can scale downward if we want to have fewer containers running, either to save cost or to make room for some other application. We'll just issue the same command. This time, we'll set replicas to 1. And if we go back to our dashboard again, you'll see that there's a single replica there. OK, so that's it for the demo. I hope I've shown you how containers and container cluster managers like Kubernetes enable you to build an application that's homogenous across a wide variety of platforms, from public clouds to private clouds to physical infrastructure and the Google Cloud platform as well. And I hope I've also shown you how the cluster management system provides more robustness for your application and scalability as well. Thank you.